excited to be here with each and every one of you this morning. Uh, we've been anticipating this day, my wife and I, and uh, we're just excited to be with each and every one of you. Got to visit some nurse, uh, nurse at the nursing home yesterday. I uh, got to see Miss Leslie and uh, got to look through her Bible. And uh, she was, Miss Alice, excuse me. Miss Leslie, I'm looking at you. I apologize. Miss Miss Alice, sorry, Miss Alice. We got to uh, look through her Bible and she was saved 10, 13, 74. That's how long she's been saved for. You know, that's a blessing. Amen. And folks have been uh, coming and they have been serving the Lord for those many years. And we're just excited about that. And uh, that's my prayer that my wife and I, we can serve together for those many years. And uh, of course, I've been saved now for 11 years, I believe 12, 12 years. I've been saved for 12 years. I got saved when I was just a, a kid just walking down the street. And I met my pastor and he was there uh, knocking on doors. And then he invited me to church. And so I came and got saved in 2008, got baptized that May, and served the Lord ever since. So I've been excited about what God has been doing in our life. And I'll tell you a little bit about what God has been doing in our life. I've been working, went to Gold State Baptist College back in 2011 after I graduated from high school. Uh, went there and served there for four years. There I was able to be uh, the youth pastor for the ministry there for the bus kids that would drive in and pick up on the buses. And there I had the opportunity to deal with 70 t teenagers and I had 20 workers that worked underneath me. Uh, it, was, it was a blessing, you know, see what the Lord was doing there. We, had, we were able to see some of the kids grow. We were able to see the Lord just do some amazing things. Uh, we were able to send a couple of our kids to Christian school. Uh, we were able to see some of the kids go to Bible college and to serve God. And those are the things we want to happen. We want God to get the preeminence of all that we do. And that was my prayer for the whole time. And then I graduated. Well, I can't forget my wife because I met my wife when I was in college, and that's a blessing too. I got to meet my, my helpmate. She was my helpmate, and, and I love my wife. And uh, the Lord just did our hearts together. At first, it wasn't a it wasn't a pleasant thing, I could say that. I was uh, playing basketball on the basketball court, and my wife happened to walk on, and I said, ladies are not supposed to be on the basketball court. <laughs> and you know what? That day she showed me that ladies are okay to play basketball. She beat me in a game of fours. And to this day, to this day, you know, she never, she never uh, lets me forget about that. So, uh, so I met my wife, we got married in 2015, and now we've been serving in Evansville, Indiana for four and a half years. And when we first got to the church, uh, the Lord, uh, we were able to be there, and the, the church was running at least 120, I believe. Uh, and now, to this day, we were able to move from our church building, move to a new church building, we moved from 12,000 square feet to 33,000 square feet, and now we run at least 300 uh, every every week, still preaching from the King James, still singing the good old-fashioned hymns and uh, congregational songs. We believe in soul winning, and all those things still work, amen? amen. That stuff still works. You know, just going out and reaching folks, that's what it's all about. That's what Christ did. You go where the people is, amen? And that's exactly what it's all about. And so we're excited to be here. And if you haven't spoke to my wife or talked to my wife, we will have a good time speaking to her. Uh, my wife, she's been in church her whole life. Uh, she's been uh, pretty much, she's a, she's a drug baby. That's what we like to call her. She's been drugged to church her whole life. <laughs> so, and, then, uh, and then for me, I started going just 12 years ago, I believe so. But the Lord's been blessing us, and we're excited. This morning we'll be in the book of Mark. The book of Mark this morning. This is something that I, I have a, a burden for for each and every one of us. I'm not going to, it's more of like a, a teaching set. We're just going to take one verse and we're going to take it verse by verse and, and, and just draw it out. You know, the Bible talks about how it's just the Word of God is like a deep water. You know, many of us, we just get to the surface of it. But you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to draw it out. He wants us to get so deep and so, not so deep, but he, he wants us to get in the Word of God that it just indwells our life. That your life, when people look at you, they can see, man, that person, they serve God. That person, there's something different about that person. And as Christians, we should be different. As Christians, there should be, people should see on us, man, there's something about that person I want. Not just in the, in the church house, but as we leave these doors, people should see a difference in our life. 
You know, there was a church that I preached at a couple weeks ago. Uh, out there doors, literally, there was on the door it said, now entering the mission field. You know, we have to live our lives like when we walk out these doors, we're, we're out in the mission field. We're out reaching folks, telling folks about Jesus Christ because that's our purpose. Our purpose on earth is not just to fill a pew. It's not just to, to come to a church, which I believe it's a good place to grow, but it's to reach those who are lost. To tell folks about the gospel. To allow people to see Christ in you. You know, it was once said that maybe the only Bible that people read will be you. You'll be the only Bible that people read. Does your life resemble the Christian walk? Does your life, when people look at you, do they see Christ in you? Do they see and do they want what you have? You know, a Christian should be happy. I love watching my wife when she plays. She's always smiling. Why? Because there's something about Christ. There's something about serving God that should bring a smile to your face. You know, I'm so happy and here's the reason why Jesus took my burdens all away. Now I'm singing as the days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. Hey, that's a good song. Amen. But do you believe it this morning? Do you believe it? You know, coming to church is exciting. You know, when I can think of my life before I went to church, you know, I was, I was literally just that person in the migrant play. You know, I, I felt like there was nothing for my life. I, I just thought that God had nothing for me. I just thought I was just on earth to maybe live and die. Until I found out, you know, God had a plan for my life. And God does have a plan. If you're young, if you're old, God still has a plan for your life. You know, I, 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 love, I love going out yesterday with Brother Seeley, you know, just seeing what he's, what he's still doing. And what many of you folks are still doing. You know, it's a blessing to me knowing that there are folks, even though you may not be able to do the things you used to do, but you're still serving God. Amen. And that's what it's about. So this morning we're going to look at Mark chapter number 8. Mark chapter number 8. We're going to read verse number 34. The Bible says this, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We're just going to read that one verse. We're going to take the words of Christ. If you have a red letter edition, it says, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, Pastor White, what is that saying about my life? What, what does that verse mean? Well, I want to ask you a question this morning. Easy question. I'll get to that. But here's the thing. You know, we live our lives and we look at the, the, the ministry of Christ. What Christ did for many. He healed. He loved. Christ went out his own way and when he saw those who were, who were lame and sick, he healed them. He told them that the kingdom of God is at hand. Same thing John the Baptist preached, but now Christ had to come and say, hey, believe in me. Believe in me. And you saw people following after Christ, but yet it came to a point where Christ was telling them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It's so easy for us to say that, isn't it? It's so easy for us just to say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I follow after Christ. So many, so many did that. Christ had a following. There were people who followed Christ wherever he went, they were following him. You could say they were his posse. But you know what's amazing about all this? Although there were many following him, he only had 12 that truly believed and truly followed after him. So this morning, I want us to think about this one question. Could you be counted with the twelve? Could you be counted with the twelve? As we look at this verse again, we'll look at the first part. The Bible says, Whosoever will come 
after me. What, what does that mean? For whosoever will come after me. You know what that takes? Number one this morning. If you're going to be counted with the twelve, number one this morning, you have to have a desire. A desire to follow God. You know, whosoever will come after me. That's your personal choice. You know, there's, there's those folks who follow after other things. You know what? They follow after their favorite music uh, stars or whatever. His favorite uh, uh, celebrities and, and things after, after going hard and things like that. But you know what it takes? It takes a desire. There's a reason why you folks come to Village Baptist Church. Because your heart's here. This is your desire. But do you have a true desire in your heart and your life to serve God? Because yes, there are so many that followed after Christ, but only 12 he could count that were faithful, that stuck with him till the end. Who weren't afraid to die with him, who weren't afraid to, to proclaim his name. Yes, there were some times they messed up. But you know, there was a time when they just said, you know what, I was once a fisherman. I was once, you know, serving after my father and living, working with my father. But you know something? When a man called me, I win. You know, that takes a desire. A desire to want to serve God. To do the Lord's will. To do right. To live right. You know, Psalm 37, verse number 4 tells us about that, doesn't it? You know, our life, our life is so important to Christ. It's not just, we're not just here to, like I said earlier, we're not just here to sit on pews, we're not just here just to fill up a spot, come to church, no, we're, we're saved to serve. And I'm so glad that when, when I came, when my wife and I we drove in, you know there's folks here that were willing to serve. Ms. Pat brought us some stuff, thank you church for that, thank you for the gifts, we appreciate that. You know there's just other places, Brother Eric was working on the deck, did you ever get to that, by the way? <laughs> All of the spokes. Hey, but that's good. Working at the, the, the beautiful house back here. Boy, is that beautiful. All the work that y'all put into that, you know, that's just a testament of your desire to want to serve God. But how is your life? Does that calculate through when you walk out these doors? Does it calculate that through your, your life? Your speech, your Bible, your personal walk with God, that's important. Your Bible reading. You know, all that is just a desire to want to serve God. A desire. So number one, if you're going to be counted with the twelve, it takes desire. Number two, we look back in verse number 34. Whosoever will come after me, secondly, let him deny himself. What does it take if you want to be counted with the twelve? Yes, it takes a desire, but number two, it takes a denial. No, what did Paul say? Hey, I die daily. It takes a, a denial of ourselves. You know, it's so easy for us to to uh, lift ourselves up, isn't it? It's so easy for us to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not filthy, I'm not wretched, I'm, I'm a good man, I'm a good person, I'm a good lady, I'm a good woman. But you know what the Bible talks to us about? We need to deny ourselves. It takes a denial. Understand, we can't do the Christian life on our own, but we need Christ to help us. We need the Holy Spirit to live and dwell within us and help us throughout our lives saying, hey, don't do that. Hey, Christ isn't happy with that. Don't do that. It takes a denial. You know, there's some things that sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I don't want to do. You know, knocking on doors on a Saturday or throughout the week, my wife and I, we go out. You know, there's sometimes I wake up and I don't want to do. But you know what? It takes a denial of myself. Because we have to understand, too, you know what's so amazing about God is that He didn't give us well, he didn't give the angels the word of God, but he gave that to us. Could you think about that? The angels do not have an opportunity to tell folks about Christ, but we do. God gave us the job to go and tell folks about Christ. You know what that takes sometimes? It takes a denial of ourselves. Well, I'm busy today. Well, it takes a denial of yourself. Well, I got too much to do. It takes a denial of yourself. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'll get around to it. You know what? It takes a denial of yourself to realize there are folks out there that are dying and going to hell each and every day. You know what they need? A person just to say, you know what? I must deny myself. Let him deny himself herself. 
It's easy for us just to do what we want to do, but it's hard when it comes to denying yourself. You know, mar marriage is the same way, isn't it? When you get married, you have to understand that it's no longer about you, but it's about us. It's about working together as a team. And there's some things, yes, that I would like done and things that my wife would like done, but you know what it takes? It takes a denial of yourself. Same thing with working with Christ. It just takes a denial. So number one, if you could be counted with 12, it takes a desire. You have a desire to serve God. Secondly, it takes a denial. Like, like Paul said, I die daily. And number three, the Bible says this, Whosoever will come after me, desire, let him deny himself, denial, here's the next part, and take up his cross. What does that mean? Well, it takes a desire, it takes a denial, but it takes death. Now, Pastor White, you tell me that I need to die? No, I'm not saying that, you know. There's folks who, uh, there's, there's folks out there, you know, the Muslims who, who do those kind of things and they die because their, their desire is wanting to serve Muhammad, Allah. And they do those things for their God. And we think they're so radical, but you know something? As Christians, we should be as radical as them. I'm not saying they like, blow things up and stuff, but I'm saying as in serving our God with such a passion that folks, man, they will seriously die for that, for Allah. And we know that's not true. We know there's a higher. We know that God is God. It's not Allah. It's not Muhammad. But are we willing to say, take up my cross? The Bible says we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. What does that mean? It means when Christ was on the cross and he shed his precious blood, you and I were on the cross too. Because he died for us. He took the sins of the world. He took the burdens that we, we have in our life and he put them upon himself. And when he put himself on that cross, he's telling us, hey, picture yourself there. But it takes that death. Understanding that we are crucified with Christ. And you know what else? It does mean death to your old life. No, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. You know what that means? We're taking a death to our old man. The old self, our old person. Who he used to be before we got saved. That's who we have to, that's the death. That's where it needs to die. You know, it's so easy for us each and every day, right, to wake up and, and live for the old man. There's some things that we used to do that, you know, it's easy for us to just go back to because it's easy. Just like the disciples, right? They went back after Christ had, had died or had, as Christ had, they thought he had died and they thought he wasn't coming back. What did they do? They went back to their old life. Peter says, hey, I go a fishing. And how many people followed after him? Three disciples. Isn't it so easy for us just to, to go back to our old life? But no, the Bible says the old man is dead. And it's time for us to serve God, to serve Christ. So as we wake up every morning, we have to kill the old man. It's so easy for us to, to sleep and wake up and don't read my Bible, don't pray. Why? Because it's so easy for us to do that. But you know what the Bible says? We have to kill the old man. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's what Christ did with us. Christ loved us so much that He died on the cross for us. That death, that love. So we think about this. If you could be counted with the twelve, it takes a desire. It takes a denial. It takes death. And lastly, what else does it take? Well, here we go. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And follow me. Hmm. Take up his cross and follow me. Let's look at that last phrase. And follow me. And follow me. First we see, number one, we see the desire. 
If you're going to be counted with the twelve, it takes a desire. Do you desire to do the things of God? Do you desire to read your Bible? Do you desire to pray? Do you desire to see lost folks get saved? It takes a denial. Let him deny himself. Herself. You know, it's so easy for us just to want to please our flesh, isn't it? It's so easy for us to do that. But it takes a denial of ourselves. Just like a marriage. I can't always have what I want. It takes a denial. It takes death. Old things pass away, behold, all things have become new. But lastly, it takes devotion. And follow me. No, it was so easy for the other, the folks who followed after Christ, it was so easy for them just to, to follow after, you know, just, oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll follow the leader. We'll just go where else is going. Christ is going to the Sea of Galilee. Okay, we'll go there too. Okay, is he going to uh, the Copolis? All right, we'll follow him there too. It's easy to follow, but that's not what he's talking about. It's not saying, you know, coattail off someone. It's not talking about all that, but it's talking about having true devotion. Because, you know, when, when Christ was, you know, being uh, whipped and, and being uh, mar martyred for, of course, for the death of us, you know what happened? There was only a few that followed. Those folks were like, oh, no, no, I don't want to be called after them. I, I don't want to be known as a Christian. I don't want to be known as Christ-like little Christs. I don't want to be known as that. Hey, I'll follow only so far, but once I get that far, that's enough. And so many Christians, they live that way. I'll go to church, but I'm not getting any, any, any farther with Christ. That's it. I'll come to church, I'll do what I have to do, but I'm not going to tithe. I'm not, I'm not going to give my life if there's an area in the church that needs to die. I'm not going to do that. You know, it takes devotion. And can I tell you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being so devoted to Christ. Thank you so much for just saying, you know what, if, yes, there's going to be hard times, and yes, we're going to go through some things, but you know what, it takes devotion. For someone like us, for, for young folks like us to see that, in the, in, in the Village Baptist Church, it just tells so much about each and every one of you. That this is not just a game for you. This is not just a, a, a dilly down kind of thing, but this is actually true devotion. This is something to you. This church means something to you. And that's true devotion. That's what Christ is looking for. You know, let's turn to take our Bible, turn to Luke chapter number 9. Luke chapter number 9. When we read the book of Luke, we think of a man who's you know, very, very uh, descriptive on things, don't we? Luke chapter number 9, verse number 23, the Bible says this. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. For whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall say, but what does that verse mean? Well, it means before we got saved, you know, we're living, but you know what? We lost our life. Why? Because our spiritual being goes somewhere. We don't just take our life and we don't just, okay, well, I'm on earth and once I get to, once I do my thing here on earth, that's it, that's, I'm done. But when we realize that when we lose our life and we give our life to Christ and we take it and we pretty much say we died on the cross with our Lord and Savior, we gain our life. Because we gain heaven, we get to see Christ. We get to walk on streets of gold. We get to see pearly gates. Hey, there will be no more night. No more pain. Hey, you may be suffering something today, but no heaven. Man, can you imagine heaven? Hmm. No, even at my age, I'm longing to see heaven. I'm longing just to walk down the streets of gold. I'm longing just to see the, the old faithful men of old. Those who serve God. A devotion. A devotion for Christ. Every day and live for the Lord. Every day. Are you devoted to the Lord? 
You know, just in that devoted, if you take D-E out, it's vote. You know, every day you have to take a vote on what you're going to do. How are you going to live your life? Is Christ going to be in it? Is He going to have a preeminence? Or are you just going to allow yourself to take control of your life? You know, I realized at a young, uh, as a young man that my life in my hands was nothing. I did everything that was right in my own eyes. I did everything, and you know what that brought me? It brought me misery. It brought me anger. It brought me to places I didn't want to go. But until I found Christ, just like many of us, until we found Christ, all of us can say, you know what, my life has been better. And God has done some amazing things. God has, has transformed this, this regimental sinner, this filthy rag into something great for him. You know who gets the glory for that? God. I can't. I don't get the glory for my life. The man say, man, man, you, you've done some great things. It's not me, it's God. Now, I, I just got done seeing my family. My family, not, many of them, they would say they believed that I was able to witness to my mom and that she went through the prayer, but of course, the prayer is not what saves you, it's believing in your heart. So that's all I have to know. My wife was able to lead my, my older sister to the Lord. My, young, my younger sister, uh, she went to church with my brother and I. And, uh, she said she accepted Christ as her personal Savior. And my brother and I were the only ones that go to church, the only ones that are serving God, the only ones who really see the importance of being true, devoted, uh, to, uh, to having a true devotion to our Lord. But you know, every time I go back home and I see my family, they always say, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You know, I just tell them, I was like, you know, I appreciate it, thank you. But don't give me the glory, it's about, it's God. You know, it's just a, a young man who realized, you know, I need to be devoted to my Lord. I needed to show God, Lord, I'm serious about this. I'm not just going to be one of those disciples or one of those followers who just followed after them. When times get tough, I'm going to quit. When things don't go my way, I'm just going to walk out. It takes devotion to serve after God, to follow Jesus. It does. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, you're going to go through some trials and tribulations. But you know what? The Bible says that He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's there through it all. And that's a devotion. So many times, you know, Christ is the one who's devoted to us, and we're just uh, people who just come around. You know, I, I read on a, a poster, not a poster, it was a uh, uh, church sign. You know, Christ doesn't want weekend visits, He wants full custody. <laughs> and doesn't He? He wants full custody of our life. He doesn't just want the weekend visits, but he wants full custody. It takes devotion. We don't lead when we follow. We have to learn to follow if you want to lead. That's devotion. So this morning, if you want to be counted with the twelve, if you want to be that person that when people look at you and they say, wow, man, God is working on that person's life. God is doing something great. God is going to do, is doing a work here at Village Baptist Church. You know what that takes? It takes, number one, it takes the desire. Desire of God's people. Your desire that I see this morning to be here in God's house. It takes a desire. It takes, number two, a denial. Hey, there's going to be some things that are going to happen at Village Baptist Church. You know, sometimes it takes a denial of ourselves. The easiest thing we can fall into is our pride. Isn't it? Sin of all sins that leads to all these other sins is our pride. It takes a denial of ourselves. It takes death to our old man to realize, you know what? It's not me, but it's, it's Christ working through me. Saying I have to kill the old man and live each and every day for the new man. I die daily. It takes the death. And then honestly, at the end of our life, when we can say, you know, I, I was devoted. It takes devotion. It takes devotion to the Lord. 
It's hard. They never said it was going to be easy. You know, even, certain, even Christ knew it. His, his ministry lasted three years. Three years. Now, I honestly believe out of those three years, even though he healed those many, even though uh, folks told about Christ and his good works, he had 12. He had 12. Who can say they truly had the desire, the denial, the death, and the devotion to want to serve God with their lives, forsaking all, but saying, Lord, I want to be counted with the twelve. Or I could actually say the eleven, because Judas, you know, he forsook first, first the Lord, so. But just that. Could you be counted with the twelve this morning? Could you be counted? Do you have the desire? Do you have the denial? Do you have the death and do you have the devotion? Mark chapter 8, verse 34, just one verse. But you know what? It, it does, it brings out so much that we all can just look at our life and really take, the Bible talks about examining ourselves. You know, when we take the Lord's Supper, you know, it talks about examining ourselves. This should be an everyday thing, not just the Lord's Supper, but examining our lives each and every day. And just think, could I be counted with the twelve? If something were to happen right now, could I be faithful to the Lord? If I didn't think something was going my way, could I still be faithful to the Lord? Just a thought. Could you be counted with the twelve? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the morning. Lord, I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. Lord, thank you so much for the faithful folks that are here at Village Baptist Church. Lord, thank you for the great time that my wife and I have been having from being here. Lord, thank you for the desire that these folks have. Lord, there's just something about this place, Lord, that just brings excitement to us. Lord, we, we're excited, Lord, and, and Lord, I, I just see a, a people here, Lord, that just want to see you work. Lord, I ask that you would just be with them. Lord, thank you for uh, the, the many years of service, Lord. I know many have been here for 18 years. For this. I know this path for 30 plus, Lord, and, Lord, it's just, it's just a testament to their life. Lord, do ask that you help us at the end of our lives, Lord, that when you look at us, you can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, that's my prayer. Lord, I want to be counted with the twelve. But we ask that you be the service. Lord, bring folks in. Lord, I do ask that if there's someone that comes today that's not saved, Lord, I do ask that they'll get that settled here today. Lord, help them not to leave this place without knowing you as their personal Savior. We love you and thank you for what you mean to us. Name pray. Amen. 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 Amen.